This is the story of my lifelong quest for a long life and how I learned that natural foods weren't going to do it for me. Even as a child, I was afraid of old age and death, the great void looming at the end of life. When I was young, I had nightmares, and later, terror kept me from thinking clearly about aging and health. Cancer was scariest of all, chemical toxins in my food, in the air, the water. So I ate organic, and I tried to get all the nutrients my body needed to be healthy and strong and protect itself from the onslaught of those poisons. I was 45, and all that good organic food was beginning to show around my waistline when I first read about caloric restriction. Lab mice live longer when they're starved. This isn't some kind of weird thing about mice. It works with every kind of animal they've looked at. The less you feed them, the longer they live. And it's not a small effect either. Mice that get plenty to eat live two years. Mice on a starvation diet, three years. Starving mice are more active and healthier in most every way. Well, that didn't fit with my idea about how to preserve my body for the long haul. With optimal nutrition, I'd been trying to give my body every advantage, and now it seems that optimum isn't optimum. Why is the body able to keep itself in better shape for longer when it isn't getting enough to eat? If all that extra food is so bad for me, why doesn't my body just excrete it out the back and go on to give me my longevity bonus? I discovered another hint. Other kinds of hardship also increase lifespan. This is called hormesis, and it's a controversial topic because it doesn't jibe with the usual view of aging. But it's true that extremes of heat and cold can extend lifespan in lab rats. And there are many poisons that would easily kill an animal, but small doses offer a lifespan dividend. This got me thinking about exercise in a new way. I'd always taken it for granted that exercise is good for us, but why should that be? Exercise damages muscles on a microscopic scale. Exercise saps energy that could be used for maintaining the body. And exercise generates free radicals like crazy. It sops up all those antioxidants and overwhelms them. Yet it's true. For humans, exercise is the best thing you can do for your health. And in lab experiments, running on the treadwheel increases lifespan even in starving mice. With hardship and challenge, the body actually does better than if life is easy? Slowly it began to dawn on me the body is not trying to live as long as possible. Instead, there's some target lifespan, some optimum that the body is aiming for. When hard time comes, starvation or an epidemic may be killing some members of the community, those that survive are living longer to make up for it. Aging is scheduled on a clock, but it's a flexible clock. I discovered that there are genes for aging. What I mean by this is, if you delete the gene with genetic engineering, the animal lives longer. Aging genes have been discovered in every kind of animal where scientists have looked, and some of these genes seem to be common to all forms of life. The same genes that cause aging in worms also cause aging in you and me. So our bodies are not wearing out over time. They're killing themselves from the inside out. Suicide genes. The solution to one mystery is often the beginning of the next. What does that say about evolution? How can an aging gene ever evolve? Darwin talked about survival of the fittest. Well, aging is programmed death. It's the opposite of survival, the opposite of fitness. Why has nature held on to those self-destruction genes all through the long ride from worms to mammals? This is a paradox a scientific challenge. It kept me busy for five years. Now I think I have an answer, and it has surprising implications for how we can optimize our own prospects for longevity. This new view of aging as an epigenetic program is actually ultra-optimistic for the prospects of radical life extension if we can learn to redirect the body's signaling network. But natural foods can only help the body do better what it has already evolved to do well. And if our bodies are evolved for self-destruction, well, we're going to need a different approach. It's a new way to think, probably as unfamiliar to you as it was to me. You can read more about the evolutionary medicine of aging here on my blog page. But for the whole story, it's all in this book, 